this isn't who is going to be president of America. This is who's going to be president of the world. <laughs> this isn't about ruling America. It's about ruling the world. I don't think I've ever seen an election like this where there is so much at stake. Don't think I've, I've ever seen anything like, like this in a long time because there is so much at stake here. And this is genuinely an election race that it could generally go either way. <laughs> it could generally go either way. And before I even get into the, the details of both of the guys, I need just to explain why this is so important. Because you can say, wait, no, what is this? How does this involve you in non-America? You don't live in America. You don't operate in America. So how does this involve you if you're an outsider looking in? It should only, um, it should only matter to Americans. Let me hit you with some real knowledge. The UN is a useless organization. It is a glorified bomb, brick, fruit selling police force. Police force. The real police force is America, not the UN. So the president of America is effectively the most powerful person in the world, is effectively the leader of the world's police force. And I'm old enough to remember before America went and invaded Iraq where the UN said, we're going to send someone to check for weapons of mass destruction. America said, screw that effort. We're going to use our veto power and go in anyway. So when that happened, I was like, oh, the UN is useless. The rule is America. Think of it as a playground. Think of it as a playground. Who rules the playground? The strongest kid. Now, you may say, it's the smartest kid. So I'll give you a good example. If we have a playground, the smartest kid might be Japan. When you look at what Japan has invented, the technologies, the smartest kid might be Japan. The strongest kid is America. Now, in many playgrounds, you may say the smartest kid is the one that rules all because they have the wits to really manipulate the strongest kid. But America may not be the smartest, but they're not the dumbest. So because they're the strongest, and they're also pretty smart as well. They don't need to be the smartest. So that combination of being the strongest and not being totally dumb, they rule the playground. So as smart as Japan may be, America have bigger guns. They've got more weapons and they've got a stronger army. The country with the strongest army rules the world. Not with most technology, um, the most advanced society, the most advanced section of arts. The country with the biggest guns and the biggest army rule the world. America rules the world. America is effectively the UN. America is the world's police force. So, ergo, this is important. Now, I'll go slightly deeper. Before we get into the whole, I'll go slightly deeper. I recommend you watch a film called Nixon, directed by Oliver Stone, starring Anthony Hopkins. And there is a scene in that film where how powerful is the president really? Because to become presidents, there are people who help you get there. And those people who help you get there, they expect you to fulfill promises that you made in order for them to help you win that presidency. So once you get into power, there are certain things that you simply have to do. So is the president really the most powerful or are the people who influence the president and tell them what they need to do really the people that are all in the world? So I think it is foolish to think, oh, this one individual is the most powerful. Not really. The truly powerful people are guys we don't see. Guys we, 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 we don't see. Go watch Loose Change. I, I, believe, I believe it's called Loose Change, the documentary about the, about the Rothschilds and just looking into the whole Twin Tower, the disaster, and really the people who really run the world. You know, monetary tax. <laughs> but back to this whole thing. Um, it's, it's fascinating. This is fascinating. And one thing we have to be clear here is never believe the polls. 
So that's why whenever I see, oh, this person's poll, this person is, is polling, I'm like, does everybody vote in a poll? Does everybody engage in a poll? Not necessarily. So you can have a poll that says person X is going to win by a lot. But a lot of people who are voting for person Y just didn't take part in the poll. So when it comes down to voting, all those people who never took part in the poll vote for person Y, person Y wins, and like, oh, how did we get this so wrong? Because polling doesn't account for everyone. Even more so, what if I change my mind? What if I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to go for person Y. And then a few days before or on the day of voting, like, thinking about it now, or that convo I had with my friends, or that convo I had with my family, taking everything into account, I'm, I'm in the voting booth, I think I'm going to go for person X. Never look into polling to determine anything. Because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think polling had Hillary beating Trump. And we all know what happened. Um... But it's fascinating. And I think, I don't know whether it's social media or the world that we're living in, it feels that politically the world is very divided now. So not even within America, I just feel people's viewpoints are so divided because I say to myself that it is, I am not an extremist because I believe that people on the hardcore right, some stuff they say is wild. People on the hardcore left, some stuff they say is freaking wild and they're delusional because I have some liberal views. I have some conservative views. You know, my views with regards to giving everyone a, a chance. Everyone deserves a chance at such education. Everyone should be given some help, but I don't believe in, in handouts. And my views on abortion is, is complicated <laughs> and has changed several times. So maybe my view on abortion might be slightly conservative now than it used to be. Because I used to have a liberal view on um, abortion when I was younger. I've grown older. And I'm about to say, well, my views might be slightly more conservative, you know, um, because that's not entirely your child. That's what I'm saying. But that's for another video. But let's stick to, to, to this now. <sighs> let's have a look. Kamala. So I was listening to a podcast. Um, Joe Biden podcast, and they were having a very interesting convo about why so many black men don't feel like they want to spot Kamala Harris. And you see, this is very fascinating on a very general philosophical view. So, because this is about race, it's about identity, it's, it's possibly even about gender. Is do you want, do, you, do people in America, how many people in America feel a woman can lead the country? That's one thing. Do people truly believe that she's black or she's cosplaying as black? That's another thing. Do people feel she's just been given this opportunity than ha rather than having to work for it? That's another thing. But one thing you can't deny is that she's smart. She's intelligent. And from that debate, I'm sorry, and this is just me. See, I told you, I have no dog in the race here. I'm just viewing it so objectively here. And that's the debate. One person looked like if they knew what they were talking about, another person looked like a clown. And this was similar between Hillary and Trump. And this is one thing that you just have to realize. There are certain things that men can do that women can't do. There are certain things that women can do that men can't do. That's just a fact. And 100%, I believe, again, no political affiliations aside, I believe that Hillary Clinton would have been a far more competent leader than Trump. <laughs> that's, 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 that's just me. And I'll get to, to, to Trump. So for, see, for Kamala Harris is like, look, it's, from my point of view, because see, a lot of our politics is, is about perception. Perception is, is reality. Let's keep it real. No one really looks at policies. So when people say, oh, go to my website and look at my, 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 my policies. No, because that's how Hillary did not lose based off policy. She, she lost based off perception. And why is perception so important? Because there's, there's a thing called a photo op. Why is Trump at McDonald's? Why is Kamala Harris speaking to Charlemagne? Why is Kamala Harris in barbershops? Because perception is reality. Because 
unfortunately, and this is, and I don't want to be rude here, ninety nine percent of people are stupid. The world is is the world is ruled by the one percent, and it's the one percent trying to win the favor of the ninety nine percent who are stupid, because for the ninety nine percent they get fooled by perception, they get fooled by photo ops, and they get fooled by sound bites. That's just the reality, you know. Um, and the one percent they know this, and that is how they and that is how the one percent have ruled for so long. So for Kamala Harris, it's because look, let's let's just keep it real. You're in a very fortunate position. You were given that vice presidency, and you were pretty much given this opportunity to be president without having to really go up against other people. You didn't really have to walk to. You didn't. She did not earn her place. I'm sorry, I'm just giving it to side. She did not earn her, her, her place to even be in this position. Um, because let's be real, like, how much has she been in the political field? Which could work to her favor and to Trump's favor as well. But what is in her favor is similar to what was in Biden's favor is Trump is such a bad guy. And we, and we just can't have Trump. How well that works, I don't know. How well that operates, I don't know. But if we're looking at perception, for me, for me, Michelle Obama looks far more genuine than she does. Like someone like Michelle Obama, even before looking at policy, she just seems a lot more likable. You know, and I just feel like if, oh, she just feels, feels a lot more realer than her. Hence why she's probably never gotten into politics, which is essentially fake. Hillary Clinton, not much charisma. You could just tell that Hillary Clinton knew what she was talking about. Like, I think both Hillary and Kamala are both intelligent people. I just felt Hillary just knew. Whenever she, she, she spoke about Kia, I think she has a grasp of what she's, she's trying to talk about and trying to say. And for Kamala, I just feel, do you really know what you're talking about truthfully with regards to this political field? So it's a tricky one for her because this is the, the, the key thing for Kamala Harris. Are you running based off of your policy, what you're about, what you're going to provide? Or are you running as an antithesis to Trump? It works for Biden. Is it going to work again? I don't know. Um, but the, the race thing is interesting. Because that's maybe for like a separate video that I may, I may want to do, talking about racial identity. But that is very interesting as in to how many Americans view her as black? Or do people view her as really Indian, but you're black, but you're not sure, or you're stepping between the two. It's interesting. It's interesting. So, Trump. <laughs> Here's the thing about Trump. Again, I'm not, I don't have a dog in the race. I'm not here about policy and all that kind of stuff. I'm here about, I'm talking, I'm viewing from the viewpoints of perception here. Because look, again, like essentially, you see, no, let me start here. There are those people that will look at policy. Not everybody that's going to vote for Trump is racist. No. no. There are people who say, I'm voting for Trump because I believe that his policies is going to make me richer. And I believe that, oh, I agree with his views on abortion. I agree with his views on the border. So, even though says, I'm a Trump supporter, oh my gosh, you are a MAGA racist. No, that's disingenuous because maybe they're like, no, I think his policies make more sense. Same thing as like, if you support Kamala, oh my gosh, you're this hardcore leftist and it's ultra. No, I like Kamala because I like her view of, of what she's going to do for education. And I don't believe that every single foreigner should just be deported. And I feel like there should be more nuance with regards to immigration. So don't have a surface level approach to when someone says that they are a, um, that they're going to vote for, for, for Trump. Here's the thing about Trump. Say what you want. If this guy is, is president, this will be one of the craziest political stories of all time. Him winning the presidency to begin with, that's already crazy in and of itself. If this guy wins the presidency again, this will be one of the craziest political stories in history. Based off of convicted felon, the media against him, the amount of anti-Trump rhetoric out there, for him to win would be would be insane. The thing about Trump is, see, it's it's a complicated one. 
I like the fact that he's against establishment. And I like the fact that he has a very unpolitical approach to, to politics. Because a lot of politicians are boring. They tick the boxes and they're just robots, just being told what to do. They're very systematic. And I prefer people who are real, straight. Now, that's being said, all because you are against this establishment doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. And for Trump, a lot of stuff he says is garbage. So some stuff I'm like, okay, that may be true there. But w w w within one truth, there's a lot of like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And when I, and when I looked at the, because I've been watching the debates, looking at the debates against Hillary, against Biden, and even against Kamala, I was like, this guy's talking nonsense. <laughs> like this guy is just rambling and just talking nonsense. Like he's literally just pulling crap out of his ass. So the fact that this guy has so many supporters when a lot of what he's saying is garbage is incredible. You see, why do you support Trump? That's what I want to know. If it's for certain policies, okay, it is what it is. But if it's because, man, he just says it like it is, man, it's just cool. I'm like, eh. But... He could win. And that's where we now go to what could happen here. Because whoever wins, it's going to be monumental. Because if Kamala wins, what is the response going to be from Trump? The response from Trump's social supporters. And how will that side of politics react? If Trump wins, <laughs> Lord only knows how the left will react, how America will react, and how the world will react. And I do feel, and this, and I, I think this is real, Trump winning would have a greater impact on global politics than Kamala winning. In terms of Russia, with what Putin is doing, in terms of how China is moving, how North Korea is moving, the issue in Ukraine... Trump winning will have a serious domino effect on global politics. I don't mean global, I mean everyone's involved. So it, it will be a very consequential victory that will affect the world. Because again, this isn't who is going to be president of America. This is who's going to be president of the world. <laughs> this isn't about ruling America. It's about ruling the world. You know, this, the, the world is watching this presidency because it affects all of us. <laughs> Israel, Iran, <laughs> Gaza, that is another huge situation there that could be very affected by whoever wins this, this presidency. So, <sighs> now, I don't, I look, I don't look, all I'm saying is that I, I think Kamala's going to win. I think. Now, both of my brothers <laughs> have said Trump is going to win. <laughs> so both of my older brothers say Trump is winning. Now, I don't know what the political affiliation, they just say no, Trump, they say Trump is winning. So, so we are all split. I think, I think my sister, I think, believes, I think my sister said Trump. I'm not sure. When my sister says Trump. My mom, she didn't really give. I think Kamala is winning. Both of my brothers think Trump is winning. Whatever the case may be, we're going to see on Tuesday how all this is is, is going to go down, man. Um, but I'm saying, no, bro, it's going to be one craziest week. It's going to be one craziest week, and Tuesday is going to be bananas, man. Remember, guys, we're going to be here for our live reaction um, for that whole thing, man. Before that, we're going to do it like a pre thing. So remember, guys, subscribe over there, over there, over there. And um, head over here. Remember, our Vibes Hangouts for Trump-Harris. It's going to be happening tomorrow. Check that out, man. One love, one love, one love, one love, one love.